Hi guys and girls, this is Reefman, and uh, today I wanted to give you some history about uh, the genus of Acropora, like who discovered it, and some information about one of my favorite corals, uh, Acropora millipora. So in 1815, a explorer slash researcher slash lecturer named Lorenz Oken actually created the genus that we now know as Acropora. Um, back then, it was called Acropora, but also called Heteropora, and so a little bit later on, um, a lot of individual species were actually described under heteropora. And then a little bit later on again, they went back to acropora. Lorenz Oken was born in 1779, and he lived until 1851, um, and actually lectured at the University of Jena in Germany. All right, so that stood until 1834, when Christian Gottfried Ehrenberg actually discovered Heteropora millipora while on a uh, voyage to the Red Sea and the Middle East. On April 19th, 1795, Ehrenberg was born in Germany. He actually got a doctorate in theology at the time, not in any science, and was interested in microscopic life. He studied fungi, um, little single-celled algae, things like that. Uh, but specifically fungi, where he got his doctorate in Germany at the time. One of the other things that Ehrenberg is actually credited for, which I thought was interesting, is discovering that a lot of the rocks that we, we know today are actually made out of fossilized small creatures. Um, chalk, uh, a whole bunch of other like rocks that we can see every day, probably in your backyard, um, are made out of individual cells of algae, things like that, that settled on the bottom of seafloors way back and then solidified into rock and now now it's you know in our backyard. So I thought that was interesting and one of the things that we didn't know until he wrote about it in his papers after having studied on his voyages. Another interesting thing that Ehrenberg discovered was phosphorescence. So a lot of you people have probably heard of dinoflagellates. These are single-celled organisms that are sort of like bacteria, sort of like algae, but really their own thing. Um, and I've caused many a reef keeper, uh, myself included, to just abandon a tank and start over. Um, before we started our large tank here, we had a smaller tank, still large, but not quite this large, and dinoflagellates just overran it, killed the coral, killed the snails because they're toxic, and uh, caused a world of hurt, and they're very hard to get rid of. Um, but he actually discovered that some species of dinoflagellates can phosphoresce and glow blue when you swim through them at night. So sometimes you'll see pictures of um, beaches that have like blue waves coming up or people canoeing through a bay and everywhere that their oar hits, it glows blue. This is um, dinoflagellates and Ehrenberg actually discovered that they were the creatures responsible for that phosphorescence. From about 1828 to 1834, Ehrenberg published a series of papers in a journal that he uh, not a journal, but collection of papers that he called Symbole Physicae. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. It's old German and I don't speak German, but um, suffice it to say, collection of essays that he published after he returned from his trip to the Middle East and the Red Sea. And in that, he, discover, he uh, described a number of species, mostly single-celled organisms, but also a lot of coral, including Heteropora, uh, millipora, which we now know as Acropora millipora. And he's credited in 1834 at, with actually discovering this coral uh, for the first official time. The genus Heteropora was used instead of Acropora until 1902 when um, they reworked the taxonomy of coral and got rid of the synonyms that, that were in use at the time. Because remember, we had uh, Acropora from the early 1800s, but also Heteropora that Ehrenberg was using in the 1820s and 1830s. Um, and that lasted until the early 1900s when uh, scientists went through and cleaned up a lot of the taxonomy. In 1967, a Filipino explorer named Nemenzo actually discovered Acropora librata, which we now know is the same as Acropora millipora. So it was actually discovered not once, not twice, but three times over the years and known as Heteropora millipora, Acropora millipora, and also Acropora librata, depending on what paper you read, who you studied under, what area of the world you were in. Um, 
That really wasn't cleaned up until just recently when we started to use genetics and DNA to describe species. And so today, when you have an unknown coral, you can actually take a DNA sample, run it against known other samples and see what it is. Um, we don't do that in the aquarium trade, obviously, because it's expensive and not easy to do. But if you are a researcher, it's something that you would use to uh, describe new species or maybe even separate species. And a lot of new divisions in the taxonomy are being created today because of DNA that we're able to study now. Um, obviously in the 1800s, you could not do that. So that's why it was so messy back then. Colonies of Millipora in the wild mature in about three to eight years, but an entire generation of life cycle takes about 10 years uh, on reefs. They're found on reef flats in lagoons and in um, reef edges, but they don't really exist in places where waves are going to directly hit them. They like a lot of strong water movement, but they don't like the sort of like crushing and crashing wave action. And so they're found in the wild between seven and 40 feet deep. So they're not super deep, but they're also not in like the first foot of water up at the top. They grow as uh, branching colonies. They don't encrust much over the rocks. They don't form a massive base. Um, they're mostly upward branching colonies and that allows us to propagate them in captivity by breaking off a piece of them and you just glue it to a frag plug, which is a little disc of concrete, and then it will grow more uh, branches. In the wild, corals frag themselves when you know a storm goes through, but they also do mass spawning events. You don't really see this in aquariums, but there are some aquariums, um, link in the comments below or the description, um, that have been able to sexually reproduce coral. Um, what happens is they release eggs all at once and no one really knows how a whole reef can decide exactly what night, what full moon they're going to release all their eggs on. Um, but they do coordinate it somehow. And one night under a full moon, usually all of the coral will suddenly do like a mass spawning event and, um, you know, eggs and larvae everywhere in the water. Acropora millipora is listed as near threatened, not endangered, um, not on the red list, uh, because of ocean acidification and other um, warming trends that are causing the, the bleaching events that we hear about in the news. Um, there's also the crown of thorns starfish that likes to eat Acropora, and it's causing a lot of destruction of reefs as well. And there's been a resurgence of the crown of thorns starfish for not really known reasons um, since about the 70s, the 1970s, that's caused a lot of damage as well. Most of the Acropora millipora that we have in the aquarium trade comes from frags that people grow or that coral farms grow, um, or also uh, mariculture, which is basically a farm under the sea um, they're not usually wild collected anymore, but a little bit of wild collection, of course, still does go on. In the home aquarium, you want to keep your millipora under about seven or 400 to 700 par and in strong flow. We don't have to worry so much about waves in our aquariums. So really, as long as you don't go from really low light to high light, they can take pretty much as much light as you can give them. And as long as you're not blasting them right in front of a power head, um, as much flow as you can give them as well. You can feed them small uh, powders, coral food, um, oyster eggs, these kinds of things they like to eat in captivity. So I hope you enjoyed this video about Acropora or Heteropora, Millipora. Um, I thought it was interesting to go through sort of the history of these corals that are so common in our tanks. Um, let me know what you thought, and if you want more videos like this, I'd be happy to, to make them, so let me know. Hopefully you enjoyed it. See you next time.